आई एस टी वी प्रेजेंट्स इन एसोसिएशन विद धनमंजूरी कम्युनिटी कॉलेज दी एम यूनिवर्सिटी इम्फा लॉन्सिंग सीरीज ऑफ एजुकेशनल प्रोग्राम रिकॉर्डेड ऑनलाइन क्लासेस फॉर अंडर ग्रेजुएट एंड पोस्ट ग्रेजुएट स्टूडेंट्स बाय टीचर्स फ्रॉम वेरियस कॉलेज एंड यूनिवर्सिटीज ड्यूरिंग दिस कोविड नाइन्टीन लॉकडाउन एवरी डे ऑन आई एस टी वी नॉन इन एट पी एम From 24th May 2020 onwards, what's for that? Only on IHTV Nongin. Today, we will discuss about the Mosbury effect. What is Mosbury effect? Mosbury effect is also known as recoil free emission and absorption of gamma rays or resonance fluorescence of gamma rays before we come to the direct mosfet effect let us see what is resonance as all of you know about the resonance in sonometer in sonometer experiment if we have a string or wire stretched on a box and we have two bridges the end of the string is fixed at one end and we have a bridge here and the string is between the two bridges yes and we have a pulley here and we tension of t we have tension t where mass mz is suspect now if l is the length between the bridges what we find is that this the frequency of this string between the two bridges is given by we have frequency f is equal to 1 by root over tm 1 by twice l where t is the tension and small m is the mass per unit length of the wire means the wire between the two bridges mass of that divided by length of the wire that is mass per unit length this gives the frequency of this stress string now if we have a sonometer and if the frequency of the sonometer is equal to the natural frequency or the frequency of this sonometer is equal to frequency of the tuning fork we'll find that a piece of paper put on this rider will be turned back this you have done your experiments in lower classes now after this other resonance let us see the other resonances what are the other resonances resonance in electrical circuits we have lcr in the tens condenser and resistance and we impress this lcr circuit by an alternating current means a variable we can vary the frequency of the applied voltage this is l this is c this is r resistance and in your class already you have done the natural frequency of this lcr circuit is given by the frequency equal to 1 by twice pi root of r lc where l is the inductance c is the capacitance and this gives the natural frequency of resonance frequency of this lcr circuit the beauty is that if the natural or resonance frequency of this lcr circuit is very different from the impressed frequency applied frequency the current is very low now 
if the F5 frequency of impressed voltage, of frequency of the impressed voltage is equal to the natural frequency of the LCR circuit, maximum current flows in the circuit. This is what we have seen in the twinning circuit of many of the radios and uh, receivers. This is it. Then let us come to the atomic case. What is the resonance in atomic case? Yes, it was around in 1904 that R.W. Wood, he was doing experiments on the basis of light, sodium light in a container containing, glass container containing sodium vapor. When he passes this sodium light, yellow light of sodium to the vapor of sodium contained in a glass tube, what he observed was that the intensity of the outcoming radiation is drastically reduced, is diminished. Oh, that he thought that, yes, the sodium vapor absorb the wavelength or light coming from the sodium, which you know it is 5893, is the min, min 5890 and 5896 angstrom, that sodium. It means that sodium vapor absorbs the radiation, that atom absorbs the radiation coming from the sodium lamp outside and light is emitted in four direction. For this is why he observed that when sodium light passes through the sodium vapor, the transmitted intensity is very much reduced drastically. And this is the resonance phenomenon in atomic case. And one beauty of this resonance phenomenon absorption is used in many of the instruments like atomic absorption spectrophotometer, then simple spectrophotometer, and even the resonance in atomic case is used in nuclear magnetic resonance and others. MRI, magnetic resonance imaging and others. So this is, there is a very precise resonance phenomenon which we have seen. Let us come to the nuclear. Before this, we know conservation of linear momentum, we have seen, that is the rocket launching, gas stream coming in the back, a rocket is upwards. In the Dugabuza and others, you have seen rockets uh, flying up, and jet, gas jet is coming in the back. This is what we have seen in the big world. But when we come to the atomic, and let us think, when an atom emits photon, that is quantum of energy, how much the atom requires? Because principle of conservation of linear momentum has to be followed. The law of physics has to be followed. So let us see when an excited atom emits photon. The photon is emitted. Let us think that. Suppose this is the photon in nucleus, and this is the electron when it comes down from the excited to large that photon will be emitted. Photon. Photon will be emitted. And in this process, the atom has to require to conserve the linear momentum. Photon has momentum, which is given by, we know that Einstein and Planck's electric momentum. So when photon is emitted from an atom, Yes, the photon energy, let us say E gamma is, or E is emitted, it carries the momentum. Then what happens is that by the conservation of linear momentum, this atom should require, require, atom should require, it may be fantastically small, fantastically small quantity. And let us see, for example, how much we will have this in the recoil. How much we have, and we can see. This is what we have, an emitter, maybe photon, uh, an atom, or a nucleus. Emitting a photon from an excited state E1 to the ground state E0. 
in this process, photon is emitted. And we know the momentum carried by the photon is E, energy of the photon divided by C, which is the speed of light. This is the in momentum carried by the photon. So the atom or nucleus will recoil with this momentum backwards. Then, to absorb that photon by the same atom or nucleus, you have to give more energy. Why? Because when this photon strikes the atom or the nucleus, then atom or nucleus has to move forward, recoil. It has to move. So that extra momentum has to be given to the photon. It means the emitted photon and the which will be required for absorption, they will be separated. Let us see how much energy is required approximately for the, yes, let us see now. Now, we see that this emission by the uncertainty principle, which I shall be coming, emission line is not as just one line. It has got certain distribution according to the uncertainty principle. It has got lifetime, certain lifetime, so it will have a distribution. So emitted photon energy, then E gamma or energy required momentum is transferred to the atom or nucleus. So what we have, the emitted photon will have energy E gamma minus ER. Where ER equal to ER, required energy, this is true in the case of atom and a nucleus also. So let us see E required energy. This is equal to, yes, E gamma square divided by 2mc square, where m is the mass of the atom or the nucleus. C is the speed of light. E gamma is maybe the energy of the photon or maybe energy of the gamma ray. Then, in the absorption, you require that photon will strike the atom or nucleus and momentum will be transferred, so you have to give more energy to the photon. So you require another required energy. It means the emission and absorption lines are separated by twice R. Twice R. So it is very difficult to observe resonance in especially nuclear case. In atomic case, which I shall be coming, why? In the atomic case, it is not so difficult because we know that energy of the photon in the case of visible light is only two, three, four electron pole. One electron pole, one electron pole is approximately called 1.6 into 10 to the power minus 19 joule. Okay, one electron pole. And the visible light which we see, which ranges from say, red to um, uh, infrared to visible or just at, around the spectrum of the infrared to violet, it ranges nearly from around, say, let us say, around 1.5 or 2 electron volt to, okay, to about 4 electron volt. So it means the energy of the visible light, which we have seen, light of the spectrum, the energy ranges from 2 electron volt to 4 electron volt. For the benefit of the students, this approximate formula is very useful, which I will give you. Suppose you are given, say for example, 300 angstrom, 3000 angstrom, which is in the, what you call, in the UV light, near by, uh, this UV. Okay, now, or this, nowadays in nanometer, so it is 300 nanometer. 
nanometer. Nanometers tend to the power minus 9. Angstrom tend to the power minus 10. Nanometer. So, now to convert this to electron ball. Please see. Remember this. Approximately it is very correct that so remember one, two, three, four, five. Remember this number. And if you have the wavelength, you can calculate the energy. For example, I take this 3,000 3, Armstrong, which is you. You'll be how much the in energy of this? Then divide by three here, 3,000. And one, two, three, four, five, divided by 3,000. So it is approximately equal to 4.1 electron volt. See. So, very useful formula. So when you see the wavelength of the light, how much the energy of that photon, it is, you can calculate. Suppose if you have 6,000, for example, I have 6,000, which is nearly yellow light, 6,000 Armstrong. So what is the energy of this yellow light? One, two, three, four, five, divided by 6,000. So it is approximately about two electron volt. Yes. So energy carried by yellow light is much less than that of the UV light. And this you have seen in the photoelectric pair and others. These are very important results for calculation, approximate calculation of the energy carried by photon.